Good afternoon, class. My name is Jamari Holloway, and this is my painting project for Humanities 101. Okay, the, fa the first painting we have here is The Sleeping Gypsy. This painting is created by Henry Rosessu in 1897, and this is an old painting on canvas. Now, the artist describes his painting as this woman, she is a wandering negress, a mandolin player. You can see her little mandolin right there. She laid down with her jar beside her and over to, overcome by fatigue in a deep sleep. A lion chance to pass by her and picks up her scent, yet it does not devour her. Also, there is a moonlight effect that's very poetic. Now, I was attracted to this painting because I was I really like this African descent of this lady right here and the scenery background of the desert. Like there's nothing there's nothing else in the background but sand and desert in the middle of nowhere. Now the lion just so happens to picks up her scent. The lion does not kill her, it just walks by, you know. I feel like the lion has a connection with her. Like, the lion came and saved her. You know, that's why I was drawn to this painting. Next, we have the Starry Night. This painting, the artist is Vincent Van Gogh, and it was, it was created in June 1889. This is an oil paint canvas that involves pigments that are bound with a medium of dry oil. The style of this painting is post-impressionist. This artist described this painting as, he wrote a note to his brother Theo, the starry night is more alive and more rich colored than any day, which has been thought to me that Van Gogh was more invested in the stars than he was in the city below them. I was drawn to this painting because I like the swirls, the swirls that he had with the painting brush. Like you can tell right here, I like the different blues he used and like the different hues of blues, like different shades and hues, different colors. I feel like the moon gives a kind of pop to the picture, you know? When Vincent Van Gogh said, the starry night is more alive and more rich colored than day. I get what he means. He makes the stars. The stars are really the focus point in this picture. The stars and the moon. Next painting. Next painting we have here is The Scream. This painting is by Edward Munch, created in 1893. This painting, the medium of this is lithograph oil paint, tempera, and cardboard pastel. Now, according to Munch himself, the screen was a picture he painted to represent his soul. He chose to use an unrealistic style to paint his emotions rather than focus on realism and perfectionism in his art. Munch explained that he painted a moment of existential crisis. He was walking down a road like the one in the painting. While the sun was setting, creating a beautiful, vibrant background, his friends was walking with him, but they, but looking out at the sky in front of him, he stopped. While they continued walking, he then described having what we now consider to be a panic attack. He, some, he suddenly became tired, anxious, claustrophobic, and the weight of nature and of the world hit him all at once. Now, I like this painting because of it's different you know i like the orange he used of the sunset and, and the scream it's like it also it also almost give me like a representation of the scary movie the scream like it's the same face as that it also it almost give it like this painting inspired the scream movie to be made and that's almost why and that's one of the reasons why I like this painting, because it represents the screen and movement. It, it gives me that kind of 
connection to the movie the screen. Next painting we have is The Last Supper. This painting is by Leonardo da Vinci, created 1452-1519. This painting uses tampera and oil on gesso, pitch and maestic. Now, this painting illustrates the scene from the last days of Jesus Christ as described in the verse Gospel of John 13:21. And it reads, Flanked by his twelve apostles, Jesus has just declared that one of them will betray him. Virtually, I say unto you, one of you will betray me. This picture despites the reaction of each disciple to the news. Now, in this painting, you can see here how Jesus sits in the middle and you got everybody else responding to the news of who they think will betray him. I like this picture because myself, I am a Christian and it, it tells a story of what the Bible is. It gives a faith, it gives a believer of what a story, you know, that's why I like this painting. Okay, on to the next. And here we have the Great Wave of Kanagawa. This painting is created by Katsushiki Hakosa from 1826 to 1833. The medium of this painting is wood block printing. And in this piece is Mount Fiji is seen, is seen from the sea and framed by a large question wave. This swell dominates the canvas, dwarfing both the mountain and a trio of boats and inspiring the title of the Great Wave. Okay, this, as I was reading about this painting, it said the focus point was Mount Fiji, but that's not really what drew the attention towards the painting from my perspective. I like this painting because of the, of the wave, and I like the way the artist used the white on top of the waves, you know, I feel like he brings the wave, like, it's, fear into it, the great wave, and use the white on the wave to decide that fear that's given the title of the wave. That's what, why I was attracted to this picture, this painting, because it's the great wave, you know? And here's the question. The Mona Lisa is one of the most famous paintings in the history of art. What is your opinion making this painting noteworthy? In my opinion, this painting is very well decorated. The Mona Lisa is a very realistic portrait. The subject softly sculpture face shows how Leonardo's skillful handling. She is dressed modestly in a translucent veil, dark robes, with no jewelry. jewelry. She has a blunt smile and gaze. She also has a very relaxed pose. This painting is being held at Louis V. Paris, Louis V. in Paris, on permanent display behind the glass. This painting is also being noted as one of the most expensive paintings in the world. This is why I feel like the Mona Lisa is very noteworthy and why I have so much respect today. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you. Oh, here are my sources.